Today I'm going to show you how to strip a wheel with a concave brake track, but more importantly, I'm going to explain why I even do this. So we have a wheel here, it's, it looks totally fine, but it, it has a major flaw in that the brake track is concave. So it's not really good anymore, and basically someone's thrown this away. So what I do is I take this wheel and I find a way to reuse it. The best way that I've found is to take a disc brake hub and swap it in to this wheel. There's another problem with this. The spokes are going to be a little bit long. So as an afterthought, you're going to see how you can use longer spokes on a wheel and how to make it work. So anyways, what we do is we look for the non-drive side because it has the least amount of tension and then we start loosening off the nipples. And of course it loosens off the tension on not only the non-drive side, but the drive side as well, making it easier to loosen the nipples on the drive side after you've completed the non-drive side. So it really is that simple. You need a, a decent enough spoke wrench so that you don't strip the nipples, but for the most part, it'll just come apart very easily. Now, it's very repetitive, so I'm gonna watch with you and explain why I even do this. One of the biggest reasons is the population of the city in which I live. So I live in Canada, and Ottawa now has a growing population of about 1 million people. So if I were doing this for money, then it's easy money. <laughs> taking garbage and fixing it, so basically taking something that's worth nothing, someone's thrown away, and turning it into something valuable is something I think that everyone would want. And I know this is true because people actually want what I do. <laughs> they, they come back and they buy other stuff when they need it. Now a lot of these people are bike flippers, so the least that I can do is try to build a quality product for that end user that that flipper is basically going to sell to. There's no way that I'm going to be a jerk and think, well, it's just flippers buying this, so what I'm going to do is rip them off. Because I'm not going to be ripping that guy off. That guy's simply a middleman. And I'm going to be ripping off the unsuspecting buyer of the bike on which this flipper has used the wheel. So again, the best thing that I can do is try to build a quality product for that end user. Okay. Let's move to the, the second reason, which is my location. So I live downtown, and downtown is central to everywhere. I have guys coming from the suburbs and the far suburbs. They want what I have to offer. I, I don't understand how paying that much in gas, coming here to save some money is a good thing, but maybe everything's just really expensive out there. I don't know, I don't live there. So since I live downtown, I live near some major institutions. I live relatively close to the hospital, universities, and of course high schools, and embassies. Now I'll start with the hospital, uh, there's a lot of medical guys, like med students, and well, they ride their bikes to work, <laughs> to work and to school, and I've known people who've worked there in the labs. What I do is I'll sell very cheaply to a med student if they need a wheel or if they need a bike, because things happen. Their bikes break, whatever, everyone has expenses. Now I'm not going to take advantage of these people, so... Uh, you know, they, they provide a service much like I do. And it's a, I, I think it's a good thing. And next is universities. Well, like I said, med students, right? They work at the hospitals, they work in the labs. They're also university students. Now, not every university student is gonna be a med student. So I help those other ones out as well. <laughs> they have to get to class, they have to get to work. And from what I understand, a lot of them do work. Now, it's not for me to make value judgments, but they're students and they need to save money as much as the next guy. And that's another reason why I do this. And of course there are embassies. So there are diplomats that come here. They do their tour for a year, two years, whatever it might be. They like bikes too. Like, I, I don't even know a country that doesn't like bikes. I've had Russian guys come and they want their bikes. They want to either build their bikes or they need parts for their bikes. So they come over, they give them a good deal and everybody's happy. At the end of their tours, a lot of times they'll just give me back the items because they're not bringing it back with them. They're simply using it while they're here. I mentioned students and embassies, so we'll call we'll, we'll say foreigners. I'm not talking about immigration or any of the problems with that. I'm talking about just new Canadians. And they're not coming here super rich. I'm sure there are some who are, but for the most part, most of them are students and then they'll, they'll seek permanent residency or whatever it might be, however that works. A lot of them aren't gonna be rich, so they also need quality stuff for cheap. And that's sort of what I'm offering here. It's, 
it really is helping out the other guy, the, the less fortunate guy. The beautiful part about that, and well, not even new Canadians, like just pretty much anyone, if you give them a good deal and a quality product, then they'll come back. Now, I, I didn't mention delivery guys like, you know, Uber Eats guy or whatever, uh, whatever those companies are, because for the most part, it's students that do these jobs, or new Canadians, or people starting out. All I'm trying to do is just make sure that they get a fair chance without getting ripped off. And I know that there are guys who will try to rip them off. And it, it's simply because you can, because a lot of these people have no choice. I'm not saying that I'm a hero or anything like that. I'm just saying I'm doing my hobby, a thing that I like and that I do well. And I'm using it to help other people out. Not only other people, but let's take the environmental types. I'm reusing stuff before it goes into the garbage. It really is that simple for me. I'd like to think that it's respectable. <laughs> now, how you can take stripping a wheel to this level, it, it, it kind of might seem absurd, but really uh, there's a bit of a plan to it. You know, like any business, you, you should have a business plan. And I'm not saying that I'm a business, but I do run my hobby like a business. I'm not paying for anything. Any money that comes in, it's used for something else. So the tools maybe that you see, sometimes you have to buy them. And that's what I'll use any money that I collect from what I do for. Now, I'm almost done here. You can see that after a certain point, you don't need the spoke wrench anymore, and the spokes will just stick out, and you just use your fingers to unscrew the nipples. There's not a whole lot to it. Really what you're doing is you're just preparing the wheel for the next stage, which is going to be to lace in your new hub. The video after this, I'm going to rebuild that disc hub that you've been seeing, and that I showed at the beginning, into this rim using these same spokes. Now, they're going to be a little too long, and I think it might be interesting to see how you can negotiate this, and to see that it's actually possible. Because one thing I can tell you is any bike shop is going to try to push brand new everything on you. It won't fit. It, these spokes won't fit on that hub. The flanges are too large, and it's not going to work. I think what I'm saying is it will work, and I'm going to give you some evidence on the next video. So there you go. There's the old hub. There's my resume. <laughs> nice dirty hands. If you want to check out any other wheel stripping videos, I'll put them here and you can just click and catch you on the next one.